Hey, fish heads, what's going on? Jen Crevasi, Jekyll Bates at Bullshad Studios, and we've got some bullshad up here right now. I've got five inch swimmers, and I've got a couple of five inch four by fours. These guys are all gonna be shell crackers. They're gonna be looking similar to this guy right here. I might do a little more yellow in the belly. Today, I'm starting out with black and white. I've already done primer. I've already sanded them. They have a white base over the primer that's gray. And then I've got just a little bit of depth in here with a black that's gonna go under the rest of the pattern. First thing we're gonna do is start with a little bit of pearlized gold. These are Createx and Wicked Colors primarily. More than likely, I'll be bringing in some alcohol inks and acrylic inks to the mix as well. That's probably going to be towards the end. So right now I'm just going to fill this cup about halfway with some pearlized. This is pearl copper. And then on these six, just want to grab that real pretty belly. I'm gonna lay in some yellow with this as well. And I think I've demonstrated to you guys doing a run before. When we're doing several at a time, we wanna try and be as consistent as we can. So setting these up and spraying exactly the same thing on several baits is a fairly effective and efficient way. Reduces your time spent, especially if you don't have to do a lot of complicated stuff. Not that complicated is bad. Complicated is not bad at all. But for the purposes of this video today, just setting up a run. This is what I'm going to be doing probably for the next few months with shows coming up. Then just get right down to the edge. Now I still have some gold in here. And for this video, we're just gonna roll through. The compressor's gonna come on. More than likely, this is gonna be one continual shot on a video. So I'm also taking just the tip of this off. And what that allows me to do is to get a little bit finer on my lines. And on the top of this, I'm gonna lay in just a couple, probably three, gold lines to put through. We haven't changed the paint. Still have the same. And actually, I'm, I'm misspeaking here. This is copper. So this is really going to fade into the background with the other colors. But I'm just going to add three relatively straight lines into this and then just go all the way down the row just want to make sure we can see those lines Just a quick side note here, this is going to be our reference photo. I'm going to shoot this above the screen. It's sideways, but only so I can reference it better. For the last three years or so, I've been building a legitimate catalog of fish that I've caught and photographed. Even though I love to catch bigger fish, I love to catch big bass, big anything, 
most of the time when I fish anymore, I'm doing stuff like this. So I'm taking my fly rod out, like a three weight, and I'm just having a blast and taking images of the stuff that I want to recreate for all of you guys. It's a great way, and I know that I've, I've shown you pictures in books before, but this is a great way to really familiarize yourself with what you have in your area, number one, and maybe what the people around you, if you're a local business, you're just getting started selling. Stuff that's around you, you're going to sell to clients in your area first, more than likely, unless you're doing like auctions and stuff like that. So this is just a really great way to get everything started, and, uh, and it really helps me. So I hope that this helps you go out, take some, take some forage photographs, do, you know, go out with a, a, a dozen night crawlers and a small drop shot hook and just have a blast and photograph what you are, uh, are catching. So just, just a little helpful tip there. So I've pulled a couple of colors out that I'm interested in using for this pattern. Um, the picture of the, of the image that we're gonna be using for a reference is up in the corner somewhere, maybe there, maybe here, I'm not sure. I never know until I'm in post-production and I edit this stuff out for you guys. This might be a little bit too dark. I'm thinking that it might have too much red in the yellow. It's a little more orange. It's a sunrise yellow, so it's a little bit darker than what I might be looking for. This is a bright yellow that I've toned down with just some base white, so I might be using this. I'm going to lay this into the top. It's a more transparent color, so we've got some pearlized lime ice. There's also a couple other cool random colors in there that we're going to be representing with opaques. I've got some sky blue and opaque lilac so when we go into the oversprays that's going to be these colors going over these these are the next colors that we're going to be laying down in that base i'm going to start with lilac or maybe not When I do longer continual shots, I have a tendency to pause between there, so most of that's going to get edited out. Just if, if you're doing post and stuff, it's uh, just splitting the, the film. Now, I want to kind of be consistent in how I'm laying this in. So since we're doing a run, I want to be as consistent as I can. Maybe put a little bit in there. So we'll do this and that and that and this just as a time saver. Get all that on the heads there. And again, my compressor is going to go off during this video and I apologize if it's annoying to you guys. But um, I have found that it has been a lot more difficult than I had hoped it would be to get videos in for you guys this year. Life has gotten a little more crazy. I know I always feel like I'm making excuses. And that's a horrible thing to feel. So I'm just making excuses as to why I haven't done stuff. I've been trying to, I guess I'm playing the juggling game with all social media. You know, Instagram wants reels and the obligations have been probably triple what they have been in years prior. Uh, I have media obligations with Bullshad now. And I also have obligations with Ketchco. So, a lot of things going on at once. Get that in there. Try and be consistent on all of our stuff here. And every time it seems like I get a moment to where I can shoot a video, there's either lots of stuff going on in the shop and it's almost impossible to get audio that's not garbage, or um, it just doesn't work out. There's something else going on. So, that's just the way it's been this year. And I'm really trying to find a way to, to, to do stuff for you guys. So just bear with me. We're still going through growing pains, even after a couple of years here in this new shop. Uh, it's just a lot louder than what you guys are used to hearing. And there's just a lot more moving parts with everybody here. So. 
Yes, I do miss the bigger shop in Jonesboro. I, I really, really do. Um, I miss having the autonomy to do what I want at any hour of the day. That's the biggest thing, is that trying to drive an hour one way to the studio to work for eight or nine or ten hours and then drive back. I'm exhausted, y'all. I mean, it's I'm not trying to bitch. It's a good problem to have. But the problem in itself is that I just don't have the amount of free time to fit everything in the way I used to. So, I hope you understand, and I apologize for not being as readily available to you guys this year as I had hoped to be. Um, hopefully it won't continue to be an issue. Got some things in the works, it's just not there yet. So, when I can get that stuff done, promise, it's, uh, it's going to be worth our while. So, just bear with me. So this is a little blue that I'm just going to put in right around behind the ear flap. These, uh, these shell crackers do have ear flaps, but they also have a little bit of blue. It's like a bluish green, so it'll kind of mellow out when I put this lime ice cream over the back of these fish. When you have everything lined up like this, it makes it a lot easier to just fill in the blanks. There we go. And that way you can just come right down the line and be consistent with the colors in the areas. You have other fish to reference on what you're doing. And I found that one color at a time, one shot at a time, makes the most sense, at least for me. If you guys have a different way of doing it, you guys are doing it uh, better, maybe. You never know. I hope that you're doing it better. Uh, I hope that I'm able to teach you guys stuff throughout the course of my day. But, um, yeah, drop a comment for me. I would love to know how you guys set up runs. How you guys are doing it in your neck of the woods. So those are our opaque colors. They're now on this fish. So I can drop these back. And now we're gonna turn the pressure back up just a little bit. Cause this, um, these pearlized, at least the lime ice, really has a tendency to be thick. Yes, you can reduce it, but when you reduce pearls, have a tendency not to be pearls anymore. At least they don't have that that bright dynamic look. So we're just gonna kind of drop feather this in. I'm gonna call it feathering because it's just real light mists. go through each one and do the same. And you can see with the transparency of the paints that I'm laying down, that that background color, the black, in the scaling is still, it's not prevalent, but you can still see it. So not a bad thing at all. And that's how you do it. Just lay it in one at a time. And that way you're consistent down the row. A couple more to go through here. Too. And I found that when I've been shooting pearls, at least this lime ice green, after a while has a tendency to kind of gunk up this nozzle head and needle. So make sure that after you shoot pearls, you're giving it a quick rinse and getting all that flake out of there so that it doesn't clog up your airbrush going forward with your next color. 
audio sync, audio sync, audio sync. So I went ahead and put a little bit of this mixed. It's a transparent, but I've got a little bit of base white in here. I'm just gonna lighten up this green. Just a real quick spray over all of it. The next part of this is going to deal with blending a couple of colors here. The, uh, the darker parts of this pattern are neither green nor gray. They're sort of a greenish olive drab gray with a little bit of moss green mixed in. So I've got some olive green, some moss green, even gonna lay in a little bit of pearl black and I'm gonna add some gray to it. So we should be able to come up with a color suitable gray there we go suitable for using as the main darker color in this pattern let me find a brush to mix this up with Not too bad. Could stand to be a little bit darker. It's going to dry lighter than you think, but let's give this a shot. I can always accent it after the fact. Bring our pressure down. I was shooting about 25, now I'm going to be shooting about 15. Okay. Got a stencil here for this pattern. And it is from Craft Beat. I think I got this on Amazon. So, puts a bit of a randomized pattern in here. We'll do one side first on all of these. You'll notice that as we continue with these patterns, it really does change the dynamic of the bait because we've got all these colors that we're kind of building out, starting with the white, starting with the detailed black scaling, then you know your other base layers, and now we're starting to get more in the details, and then we're going to cover that with some final little flash and pop, which is going to be some golds and some shiny greens a little bit of shiny blues. So we're gonna flip this and then just bring the pattern backwards the same way.
doesn't matter. As long as you're picking your stencil up, it doesn't matter which side you really start on. Just get your stencil flat against the, the fish as best you can. Now the first one that I did with Mike, just to show you as an example, I used a, more of a moss, just a straight moss green in this. And Mike asked me to try the, the grayish green and I think he's right, I think that looks better. He's always said, hey, you're the artist, but he does have good ideas. I mean, he's kind of built a bunch of baits over the years. So if he asked me to try something, I do listen. this sometimes you have to adjust these helping hands just to get the stuff to lay properly and then get that and you don't want to cover the entire thing because the belly on most of these are like a yellowish white Maybe a little bit of gold in there. You want to leave the, uh, the face. And then uh, if you have anything that you can, because you can see the build up on this. I don't know if you can see it in the light. Let me get my monitor back on. Yeah, you can, right about there. You can see how much buildup gets on this stuff. So if you just blot it, I always try to have a fairly clean, this one's kind of getting trashed, but a fairly clean area to just drop extra paint buildup on. Because you don't want to make gobs of junk on your on your bait. So now, we're just about through this. One more to go. And we're really starting to come together as a pattern here, I think. Again, this is a Craft Beat stencil. Fairly certain that I got it off of Amazon. I'm going to try and find the link and shoot it down there for you in the description below. To finish up the uh, the paint in this cup here, I'm going to add just a few details to the cheeks and the gill plates because they are on these fish. harder to do the ones that are build like the 4x4s but not impossible not impossible we're going to come over all of this with a pearl white so now that I've got all these guys lined up again I've got just a little bit alcohol ink and a real cool flashy blue and on these shell crackers they do have it just a little bit but they have it so we're going to bring this stencil back one more time just kind of move it a little bit through their gill plate just in a couple of spots
both sides. Don't need to flip it over for anything like this. It's not, it's not that serious. Just make sure you kind of put it back on the, the fish. Just a little bit on the gill plate and a little bit behind that ear flap. Next quick tip, if you use alcohol ink, make sure you rinse it out with alcohol. Just has a tendency to get it out better. I've got a little bit of gold back in the chamber and we're just gonna drop that real easy on the top section up near the spine of this fish. going to grab some plain base white. And very lightly come back and touch up the belly. Just kind of blend this out. Mix it in with the, uh, the lilacs. Lighten it up just a little bit. Also going to bring this stencil and work just a little bit on the nose of this bait. It's probably just about time for me to reseal all of the openings and fittings on my compressor. When the compressor was brand new, I was able to get about 25 to 30 minutes worth of spray time without it kicking on. So the next piece of this puzzle is getting the ear flap in. I always put the ear flap in, at least anymore, freehand. really all I'm doing is adding a light touch to this just like that try and get one for the other lens Just a nice, light touch. We're over here at the finishing desk now. I've got a detail brush and I've got some white opaque base paint. And we need to do the liner around this ear flap. And the liner is a little bit longer on the red ear because part of it is going to be red. 
and then it's got that white trail around the red. So this should look pretty cool when we're finished with it. And you, you want to give it enough room to where you can still see the red. So that's about the way that should look. Just hit both sides. And then probably off camera, I'm going to do the rest of them. But you want that white in there and then just come back down and bring the white around to where you will definitely be able to put some red over that. So once again, that's what it looks like. Now we're going to lay in the red. And on most of them, if you notice, it doesn't go all the way. There's still a pretty discernible area of white. But the red is prominently at the edge in the middle. This is almost like a fire color, not quite red red. More um, like a sunset red. And there you go. Red ear. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate the view. And if you have any questions or comments, by all means, please leave them below. It does help the channel. And I really appreciate you guys supporting Jekyll Bates. So cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.